to hear more about that gauntlet of going through the movie and then showing it to people and like you've slaved over this picture and now people are having a, a reaction. You don't know what it's going to be until they actually do it. You probably know best from compliance at Sundance, which was just like an explosive experience. What was that like? Um, it was, I mean, we had an idea that not everyone would like the film. Um, we had no idea people would arbitrarily yell at us, particularly in a festival setting that is very clearly uh, centered around Q&As, director Q&As at every single screening. So that was, I mean, you know, um, was that one, one of thing my- Craig said in the beginning, he was like, you may not like this movie, but as long as you stay after it to like, tell me why. I, I mean, thought that was great. That like, was, I mean, well, that was in the aftermath, kind of, you know, it's like, was great, I mean, the main, the main thing that was disappointing about that experience in terms of having people just shout out was that they then fled the theater so that there wasn't any further dialogue. It was just, it was, it was not Q&A. It was just, we're going to yell at you and then leave. So we don't tell you in any nuanced way, why, you know, what yeah, we're thinking or issue, why yeah. we're upset or, right. you know, it, I mean, I understand it's a different experience if you're in a regular movie theater and you're not expecting that kind of interplay, but Sundance requires their directors to be at every Q&A and, and it's an opportunity to have a dialogue with the audience. So it's, it is very interesting. I mean, on the other hand, I, I think how unexpected it that reaction was, that was for everyone. That was unexpected. I mean, you have, you, have you ever had, had we, we I know, guess you guys know, have had people yell know, at you. It's always going to be polarizing. I mean, yeah, but, but that's the best that's thing That's why they make films. The, <laughs> that's exactly why it is. Because you're part of something progressive. You're doing something different. You know what I'm saying? Like, you made a movie well, that's going to evoke an emotion. Right. Whether I mean, it's good or not. It's, it's, it's like yeah, we're not it's amazing. Making a well, it evokes cutters. a conversation and yeah. hopefully and it, a discussion. Yeah, and you're hopefully about that it's an actual a, conversation. Right. right. So that it's like, an actual dialogue. Like we are conditioned very differently. We all grew up in movies in America through escapism. In Europe, the government pays for their movies, so they're, everybody's conditioned to go to the theater to, uh, to, uh, to challenge themselves. Do you understand? So it's like there's a different history there, different movies coming out of there. And we all grew up on the Goonies and Back to the Future, and we have that escapism. But going to film school and discovering Hanukkah and Bruno Dumont, you know, and Gaspar Noé, it's like these people are making things that are really hard to follow, but there's something to be said. So how do you cross the, how do you bridge the gap where people are being challenged at the same time they're being entertained? And that's why. I try and do what we do because it doesn't always hit, but there's something right. to be said about right. challenging the end, and you're there's helping them find the formula in order to do something to the progressive. Yeah. The, the yeah. worst thing about producing movies is when you produce things that's already been done before, right. and like being a part of that's kind of lame. Reva, do you have a moment in your career where you have seen a movie, like people have had that reaction one way or another, either that it was expected, that it was unexpected, or screaming at the director afterwards. I've never had the luxury of that. <laughs> luxury. <laughs> luxury. Yeah. Not, not, yeah. not that people are, you know, ready to burn down the theater after seeing your movie, but just said that you have created something that is eliciting that reaction from people, and, and that kind of brings you either joy or an unexpected shock, or you've seen an audience watch your movie. Sure. I mean, I came up as a producer through post-production, so I have spent hours and hours and hours watching our movies over and over and over again. So I would say that, you know, a film that it, I helped to produce, which makes me cry every time I see it, was a film called Grace is Gone. So I would watch this movie in a small little room and like see John Cusack have to tell his daughters that their mother, you know, is gone. And every time I'd be moved to tears. And so then, you know, we take the film to Sundance and I have no idea, like I've just been watching it in like these tiny screens and DI rooms and basically alone. but. You know, to sit and watch that movie with a theater and have people, you know, to hear like the sniffles and to hear the whimpering and then, you know, for that film to have like elicited that same sort of emotional response from a big audience was really awesome. I mean, it was really amazing. Sure. So. And Jared, you mentioned hearing laughter when, you know, we're making a joke in this movie and I want it to play and it does play. What, what was that experience like for you? It, something it's just exciting. I mean, you feel like... You know, you've given birth to like a smart, handsome child. You know? <laughs> so, I'm slightly autistic. People like it. You know, I mean, whether you know, even if, even if, just just people responding means like you've done something right. I've also made movies that 
uh, were awful. And then you're watching it and you're cringing along with yeah. the audience. Yeah. Do you feel like you've made something that wasn't digested the way you expected it to be, that didn't play exactly yeah, sure. the same way? And, or is there something specific that you can recall that just like... Uh, I'm not, I, I don't want to name names, names but, uh, <laughs> but sure, but I think it's, you know, but it also then goes back to, to whether you felt the team gelled right. or not. Uh, and sometimes you don't, you, you feel like it is gelling and then partway through the shoot, like, People's personalities change under pressure, uh, and they don't handle pressure well, and they like start to feel like a, like there there's a gang mentality going on when there isn't, and like it's a lot like sports. I mean, it's like being it's on a lot. soccer team. It's like when you're off the field, it's different. When you're on the field, you're working together, sure. and it's like and it's going to give you that energy to go yeah. the next step because it's not over once you show it at a. At a, uh, a festival. I, I love to see my films. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see Gun Hill Road at Sundance. I was getting, I was somewhere else. Like I just, I get nauseated. Like I just have to get through. Like I wait for people to come out, and I'm like, oh, it's great. And I'm like, okay, I'll go see it the next screen. But I couldn't, I can't. Sit I stood through. at the back of compliance. Yeah, like I people just walked out, and I like, and I, I was like, know, like, like sit next to the director, and you worry about how they feel. Yeah. 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 That's I mean, what you want to make sure that they're happy yeah. with everything, and like, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I remember I lost like 10 pounds in the can screening of, 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 uh, of after school. In the screening? <laughs> I'm just saying, so you lost 10 pounds in no, the it, No, my suit wasn't fitting when I got up. No, because Tony kept grabbing me. And like we, we printed like traditionally, so our sound was printed onto it. Right. So before we left, it's anamorphic, so it's always kind of weird. So we printed our sound onto it, and the sound we heard before we left wasn't playing right. And, it's like it, and so Tony stayed two extra days. And like we didn't hear the print after they right. fixed it, so he literally flew in with the print three hours before the screening, and it was only playing in mono. You can never stop worrying, and and, and, and it worked. We had we he was like, don't get up. They hated. It. He thought coughing in the theater meant that journalists were communicating how bad it was, <laughs> and basically people got up and, and left. He's like, don't get up, don't get up. And then when we got up, we, we sat there like this, and we just heard applause. We looked back, and the rafters so standing ovation, and it carried out into the hallway and out onto the street, and it was like, but you know you. They feel that way because it's so precious to them.